I wanted to highlight one last part of lactate that I think is not appreciated before we get into some of its further relevance and clinical context. And that is the ability of lactate to send a signal to fat tissue. So there are multiple studies now showing that lactate, when it comes to fat cells, is capable of having a few remarkable effects, very unexpected. One, for example, is that lactate has been shown to help in the beijing of white adipose tissue. Now, I am touching on a deeper topic that I've in fact talked about before in previous metabolic classrooms, but you'd be familiar with the idea that on the human body, there is white adipose tissue, which is the, the, the fat that we pinch and jiggle and has an extraordinarily low metabolic rate, which isn't surprising because it's one of its primary roles is to store energy. But at the same time, humans have brown adipose tissue, although relatively quite little of it. But this brown adipose tissue stands in stark contrast to the functions of white because brown adipose tissue, these fat cells have a very high metabolic rate. They aren't designed to store energy, but rather to burn it with a primary purpose apparently being the creation of heat. So this is a way in which humans can maintain a body temperature in the absence of shivering. But in adults, of course, it just means it works with shivering to help the body be warm. So lactate has been shown to make white adipose tissue behave a little more like brown adipose tissue. And separate from this has been the evidence that lactate does so by stimulating mitochondrial uncoupling. Now, once again, this is a deeper topic. It's a fascinating topic, and it's one that I love talking about, but it's a bit of a, a too big of a tangent right now. But suffice it to say, if you increase mitochondrial uncoupling, then you are making the mitochondria and the cell, by extension, burning energy just to create heat, which in an organism or within biochemistry, that's a generally an inefficient effect. Uh, normally, if you're burning something, you want to get work. You want to flex a muscle more, for example. In this case, uh, fat tissue, which has no flexing to do, now you're just telling the fat tissue to just burn through energy just to create heat. And again, lactate does this. So beyond its ability to be used as a fuel, it actually can stimulate greater fuel use. So lactate is acting as a signaling molecule. It's telling these white fat cells to be a little more wasteful with their energy. And if you've got energy to burn, like most people do, as we all struggle with varying degrees of chubbiness or obesity, then that's not a bad strategy. So this is, a, in my mind, this is a, represents another just fascinating interaction in the body where in the case of let's imagine an exercising muscle producing lactate, that lactate then has further benefit. If this person say exercising to maintain or improve metabolic health, the lactate is further helping that happen by stimulating a little bit of an advantage at the fat tissue, just telling the fat tissue to run a little hotter to increase its metabolic rate just a bit. Like I said, I wanna highlight its relevance, lactate's relevance in a clinical context. I think this is important because as we are approaching the widespread creation and use of continuous lactate monitors, the low-hanging fruit for these soon-to-be-available lactate monitors, and it is soon, um, th the obvious relevance is going to be in athletics uh, because people are going to want to be training and monitoring their lactate threshold. And for good reason, that's a nice, effective training strategy of improving your overall fitness and your capability. Um, but that is the low-hanging fruit. And in fact, I would suggest it's the less relevant fruit. I think the more relevant part of, of lactate monitoring and, and the widespread and continuous measuring of lactate is its role in predicting mitochondrial or predicting and being indicative of mitochondrial damage. Uh, so if you detect that people who have chronically high lactate levels, not because they exercise so much, in the absence of um, exercise, it could be evidence of an inability to burn it very well. As you'll recall from Dr. George Brooks's work, lactate is an energy source. The body can literally burn it directly. 
as a fuel. But to do so, it has to rely on the mitochondria. Well, what if people don't have as much mitochondria perhaps as they should? or the mitochondria aren't working particularly well. That brings us back to this idea of mitochondrial dysfunction. One of the most relevant disease states that have been shown to connect or be a result of mitochondrial dysfun dysfunction in part is type 2 diabetes. So there is a tremendous and even old area of research. There's One of the studies that I'm going to share with you in the show notes is from 2001, um, just documenting the ability of, of a clinician to look at lactate levels in non-exercised state and connect it to a greater risk of type 2 diabetes. So there's just a few studies that I just want to share as we start to wrap up. One study, this is the Ishitobi study, 2019. They found that fasting serum lactate levels are elevated in people with type 2 diabetes. And it was very consistent. Um, they, another group, Sandquist et al., this is the 2001 study, found that um, in healthy, so non-diabetic first-degree relatives of people who have type 2 diabetes, these non-diabetic individuals but related to people with known type 2 had higher fasted lactate levels um, in the body. Um, so this was thought to be an early indicator of an increased risk, which is very well known. If someone has a first degree relative with type 2 diabetes, they are they have a much higher risk of developing type 2. And interestingly, they also will have higher lactate. Another study, um, this is from the Atherosclerosis Risk in Communities, ERIC, A-R-I-C -A -A study. Um, it demonstrated a strong association between lactate levels and development of type 2 diabetes. So this was a little more perspective following people over time, essentially concluding with higher lactate, there was a correlation of increased risk of diabetes. And then another in that same study, but a different in a different publication, but from that same overall project and data set, um, they found that, this is evidence of reduced oxidative capacity. So kind of bringing it more conclusively back to the mitochondria. So I want these sentiments to affect you where you think um, that you have a better appreciation of the role of lactate well outside the realm of athletics, which is relevant, but also less relevant than its its ability to act as an early warning for a metabolic problem, specifically a mitochondrial problem, and then perhaps predicting a greater risk of type 2 diabetes. So as continuous lactate monitors are being developed and eventually will be hitting the market, this is one of the areas that I hope it will focus on. It being a sign, a potential sign of mitochondrial dysfunction and thereby a predictor of underlying metabolic risk, particularly with type insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes.